So I wanted to make a table for some friends, and I chose Doug Fur. This is just Doug Fur that you'd buy at the lumber store, any big box store. And it's not the best lumber, as you can see. Some of it has pits right, going right down the middle, which is not ideal. And I use some of those boards, but I really try to avoid them. Um, but one problem with most of this wood is it is not dry. Even if you buy kiln dried, it's really only dry down to maybe sometimes I've seen 18%. And uh, even these boards, I had these sitting for a long time stacked and stickered, and they were still, some of them were still pretty high. So I tried to avoid using those in these build, this build. Um, in my shop at this time of the year when I was building it, I want to be somewhere around 11% uh, at, at moisture content. So those are the boards that I did choose. Avoid anything above that. But again, you need to check your, your location, your, the time of the year, the humidity. Uh, really what what wood should be at that specific time so every piece of wood or every project kind of starts at this jointer uh, and what i'm doing here is i'm just jointing one face so that'll make one one face flat and then i'll joint the edge and then those will get ripped uh, one side will get run through the the table saw and then the top of the other side will get put through the planer not the safest to have a joiner this big without a guard. So I definitely recommend get a guard or build a guard. I am a big advocate of safety and I am not being so safe myself. So do as I say, not as I do, I guess. Another thing is people might might say gloves at a table saw is a bad idea and it, and it definitely can be. Um, I just choose to use wood or I choose to use gloves on specific specific woods when they're really rough and I'm doing a lot of ripping so use your own discretion I try to be very careful if I am wearing gloves I never get close to the to the blade and I'll use a push stick like that so use your discretion be safe table saws are a beast even if you have a, a saw stop here I am flattening the other side the other face and this is nice to do before you do a glue up because it kind of gets them all the same thickness and it gets them flat. That's very helpful when you're doing a glue up. Uh, otherwise, you'll get wonky boards and it's kind of hard to fix that afterward. You'll see the tabletop I'm building, I'm going to glue up in two sections and they're 20, 20 inches wide uh, per section. And then that will get glued up to one big tabletop. The reason I'm doing this, it's a little bit easier to glue up and manage. And secondly, I can run it through my 20 inch planer uh, once this, the two panels are done. So here I am doing a dry fit. And I like to do a dry fit whenever I can. Kind of helps you uh, avoid mistakes before you get that glue on there. And another thing too, uh, if you do a dry fit, you can kind of see if there's any gaps in between boards. And if there is, you can go real quick join it and then you'll be nice and flat. The last thing you want is a board, which I see a lot of, of tables have this where there's either a void or there's a little bit of a gap and you just fill it with epoxy or, or filler or whatever. I try to avoid that as it's, it's gonna be a weak point in the tabletop. So here's the first tabletop glued up and I'm just checking for any, any, raise, any raised parts in the panel. And what I usually do is stick a board under the, the culprit and then I'll whack the other board like that. And that really will level it right out. Um, Typically, if you're using a hammer that's pretty hard on, on a wood this soft, get another piece of wood on top that you whack. Otherwise, you'll indent the wood. Here's second panel. And look at that, I found my, uh, my roller to roll the glue on. It's a lot easier than using your fingers. A lot less messy. And then here I am getting those bumps worked out. I like to spend a little time when I'm doing glue up and try to get it as flat as possible in the clamps. That way, when you're done, you have to do, you don't have to do as much planing and you don't have to waste as much wood and ultimately time. So here's the two panels all glued up. Now it's time to joint one side and then we'll rip the other one and then we'll plane them. rip in a little bit off just to really get a flat a true face for that and then we'll do that on the other panel 
and then they will get shoved through the planer. And I'm really only taking off really just a hair on both sides as I want to keep them thick, uh, but it's it's not that big of a deal as I will I will be goof I will be uh, kind of using a, a funky trick to double the thickness of the tabletop with actually without actually doubling it. You'll see in a bit what I mean. And here's the glue up of both of those panels into the final table. Now I didn't use any dominoes or biscuits or anything. I didn't have any, uh, I actually didn't have either of those machines. And you really don't need them. I, you definitely don't need them for strength. If you are worried about a glue joint breaking, then then there's something wrong in in your design. The uh, it, because I mean, unless somebody is like King Kong is going to be jumping on this tabletop, and there's no nothing underneath it to support it, then you're you're going to be just fine with a a solid glue up. So here I am using a track saw to f uh, cut both the length and the width. Uh, to the final dimensions and I made the tables oversized uh, because I'm going to be doubling the thickness and flipping these pieces and gluing them to the bottom. You'll see in a little bit what I mean by that. And here we are starting on the legs for the table. I just set up a stop block and started cutting a bunch of pieces. Again, it's just the same Doug fur that you find at a big box store. It's, uh, it's a very cheap, uh, very cheap wood, very cheap. And most people, most people would not, not recommend using for uh, furniture, but I don't know. I kind of beg to differ. I think it's, it's fun to experiment. Uh, and in the long run, so far, I've been very happy with the table. I think it's, it's, yeah, it's nice. And then here's those table legs getting jointed on one face. I'm going to be doubling the thickness so one piece will be glued to the other. So I need two true faces. And then here's those pieces getting glued up. A lot of clamps for this stuff. Man, oh man. Whew. You guys have heard it a million times, but you can just never, ever have too many clamps. Because one day you're going to use them all. And you're going to say, whew, wish I would have bought those clamps at that garage sale, right? Well, uh, if you can make uh, anything of this mess, it's uh, number one, you can definitely never have too many clamps. <laughs> uh, this is four legs for the table, as well as some connecting points uh, to the legs. Um, I'm kind of making this one up as I go, honestly, so we'll see how it goes, but uh, yeah, we'll let these babies dry and move on to the next thing. I'll probably start gluing up maybe uh, something else. I don't know. I'm sure there's a couple more things I can glue up. Our prep table top. Here I am just sanding a little bit off the top because I want to use the dust that I collect from this, as you'll see here, to make a wood filler, and all I do is just add glue. Uh, and I fill in all the voids. This is kind of a great way to match the wood and it's a lot cheaper and you can just make it on the spot. And in my opinion, I would argue that it is much stronger than wood filler. So I usually keep like a container of walnut dust for big projects because I work with walnut a lot. And it's uh, great when you run out of wood filler or it's just dried up in the can, which I'm sure all of us have experienced several times. <laughs> so here's the top getting uh, a little bit of sanding with a belt sander. And here I am starting to add a metal track on the bottom of the table. And this is a technique I saw a Canadian woodworker do. If you don't know who he is, follow him on Instagram. He's got amazing work and amazing wood. Whew. But yeah, all I'm doing is routing out a channel for C-channel uh, metal. And what this will do is prevent the wood from bowing and twisting when it wants to have its seasonal movement, which it's going to do, and we don't ever want to prevent that. But we want to prevent it from bowing and twisting because that's no good. When a, when a table tabletop bows, it's just, it sucks because, man, there's not much you can do other than try to bow it back in the opposite way. 
But once it twists, twisting is even worse. So I just routed out the little spot for that C-channel to sit in. Now I add two grooves for the actual legs of the C-channel to sit in, as you'll see here. And then we'll drill oversized holes. And then the screws that will go in there will have big washers. So when the, when the tabletop actually moves and it actually expands and contracts and, and so forth throughout the seasons, it'll allow, it'll allow movement for that, but it won't allow it to bow or twist. So far, this technique I've used a couple times, and I've been very happy with it because even if you build a table, let's say, at a time of the year where it's really humid one day or at the beginning of your project, and then later on it gets really dry or vice versa, your top might start to move a little bit, depending on the wood you use. I've seen that a lot with maple, uh, maple tops I've used, so it's a great technique. Now here's the ends, as I was saying, I wanted to book match it and make it double the thickness. So this is the pieces that we cut off. And now I'm gonna go to the table saw, cut a little 45 on that, and then we're gonna add the sides. And then once the top is flipped over, it'll look like it's double the thickness. Uh, but more than that, it'll also kind of have a really cool design as it will be book matched. And so, as you'll see, in just a little bit, it's pretty cool, I don't know. I've seen a lot of woodworkers do this and I really, really fancy it. So this is that piece getting glued in. And as you can see there, it's book matched. So each piece is just a mirror image of itself. Really, it's kind of a, a, a woodworkers just, it, it's a kind of cheating, but I don't know. I, I really like how it looks. Again, it doesn't add, it doesn't really add any strength. It's re, it's purely for looks. And, and, and once the top again is on the tabletop flipped over, you never know, you never tell unless you look under or you feel with your hands. Here's the other side getting glued up and then we'll work on the sides. And then here's the legs, back to the legs, getting those jointed. I had to make a makeshift fence because my fence was broken at this point in the project. So that's why I got that janky, janky fence. And we'll rip those down to final width. And we'll plane uh, both sides, get them all the same thickness and cleaned up a little bit. And then we'll cut to the final final length. And I'm adding a two, two and a half or two degree cut on both the bottom and top so they toe in toward each other a little bit, as you can see. Angles are fun. They're not very fun to work with. I'm terrible at math, so I have to triple think, double, you know, just double check everything. Call my brother who's an engineer and make sure that I'm doing it right. Because I'm I ain't so smart with math. Here's the mortises getting cut out on those legs. Man, it's great to have a table that moves. Whew, it's, it's just the worst when you have to unclamp every piece every, for every cut. It's, and I didn't even have to do that many mortises, but I can only imagine if you had to do a bunch. Matt Cremona, what are you doing, man? You gotta get one of these, I'm telling you. Now we're gonna start cutting the tenons on the legs. And I just have a dado stack in my table saw here. Now in the background, you can see I have that Powermatic tenoning jig, but my only concern with that is it's really hard to cut angled tenons on that. And maybe I'm just not understanding correctly, but maybe somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, maybe uh, the Wood Whisperer, since he's got it as well. I don't know. Cutting angle tenons, not easy on that jig. Here's test fit for that leg. Nice and tight fit, which is what you want. You don't want it too tight where you gotta whack the heck out of it, um, but enough to where you can hold the piece up. And then that's just plenty tight. Once you add glue and clamp pressure, and even if you added pegs or anything, I mean, that thing ain't going anywhere. Not bad. That's solid. If you can hold your mortise and tenon stuff up without them falling out, very solid. Add some glue, 
maybe some pegs. These babies are solid. They ain't going anywhere. Woo! It's got that two and a half degree curve. Uh, curve toward e in toward each other, of course. Uh, and then at the top, it's got a two degree going the other way, op opposite way. So when you set a table on it or anything, you do your stringers or or whatnot for the table, it'll be flat as well. So looks good. Okay, so on to a new day here. This is the other leg that we have not fitted yet. I uh, just cleaned up this tenon just a touch and chamfered the edges. So we're gonna see how this fits. Whoops, wrong way. Nice fit. Flush it up. A little clamping pressure and that'll be nice and tight. Thanks for watching guys. That is it for this video. Go check out the other one. Uh, that'll be the last and final video for this build and you'll kind of see the end result. And if you like this, please leave a comment below. Tell me what you think and maybe ways I can improve on some of my weird techniques. Again, please subscribe, leave a comment, hit that thumbs up. Thanks guys.